Well, okay, this video is a bit of a follow-on from uh, my own personal endeavors to find some new irons. I did a test on course last week and I'm still delving into the possibilities. And one of the things I'm questioning is, is forgiveness really a thing in irons or is it just a marketing myth that we all buy into? In today's testing, I'll get you some answers. Is forgiveness really a thing? And in recent weeks, I've done a lot of testing and using TrackMan to look at impact location where I fit on the club face to determine whether or not off-centre hits are being duly punished or is that forgiveness thing really helping out. And in today's video, I'm going to look at two irons at the opposite end of the spectrum. One's a blade, one's a game improvement iron. And between the two of them, is forgiveness a real major difference or not? Now, I said in the title of this video, it's really important that you watch this video before you buy your next set of irons. And before I go any further, let me just reiterate that point. In the testing, I found some really significant telltale signs that told me something really significant and why you need to keep on watching to find out a real important bit of information that will change the way you buy your next set of irons, trust me. Right, let's start off with the two irons in question that we're gonna be, uh, well, trying to figure this one out and figure it out on a personal level because the two irons are massively different in terms of their profile. The 221 from Mizuno is an all-out blade. It looks stunning. I want them in my bag by choice, but really speaking, the 225 is the club that I should have in the bag. That's if I listen to where I'd be pigeonholed where the manufacturer would put me, definitely in 225s. What I want to know is why I can't have the 221s. What is the big difference? If you take looks alone, there's an obvious factor that you would think. And if you look at these two from the sole, first of all, in terms of the width, if you then have a look at the top line, and if you have a look at the overall profile, there's a big suggestion that one is more forgiving than the other. But is it? This video is very simple and straightforward. What I'm gonna to do to establish whether or not one is more forgiving than the other is I'm gonna hit a number of balls. Once I'm satisfied we've got enough uh, data that I can rely on and is relatable, I'm then gonna simply look at where I hit across this club face and we're gonna examine what happened. Was there a big drop off in terms of ball speed? Was there therefore a big difference in terms of yardage carry? That's simple, it's, it's dead easy. For me, that determines whether a club is forgiving or not. There's also other considerations when you're buying a set of irons, and not just in terms of performance. Probably in a... So at this point, it's over to you, and the question is, why do you buy your irons? Because like I said, is it just purely based on performance? And the last time you did a custom fit, were you looking at impact location? Because I really do believe that should be something that's brought into every custom fit so you as a punter can see exactly where you're hitting in that club face and really see if forgiveness is a thing or not. And definitely one of those important things that you should be making sure you look at when you buy your next set of irons or any golf club for that matter. Right, so whilst you watch my performance with a couple of these uh, five irons, my opinion on um, an address and how I should have felt with each club in hand is really important to me because I'm not sort of fearful of the blades, I'm not fearful of the thin top line, but I do look at the profile when they're together with uh, the likes of this um, 225 and you do start to question your ability more than ever. And I think it's something that again, that manufacturers have drilled home to us because of this sort of pigeonhole and category that they put you in. So it's not so much, um, well maybe it is you question your ability, but it's a seed that is planted very much by the manufacturer. But the thing that I wanted to say was that neither of these clubs, even at five iron length, put any kind of trepidation in my mind when I address. So that wouldn't be a reason that I was buying any of these clubs. But maybe forgiveness is gonna be one of them. Now, one of the other considerations and bugbears of mine, if you like, in terms of custom fit is our inability to access different clubs other than a seven iron when we're potentially buying a new set of irons. And in this video, you'll see why that becomes majorly important because I've got access to the five irons of both of these ranges. And when I'm considering now forgiveness as being a key factor, this becomes majorly important because as we know, five iron, more difficult to hit more difficult to control in terms of length of shaft, 
And therefore those off centre strikes are really, really important that we get that forgiveness factor if it is indeed a thing. You can see again by the profiles of these two clubs, they're hugely different now. Looking at both of them, yet again, you start to see that one suggests it will be more forgiving than the other. But I still got a question in performance wise and in data wise, is that going to be the case? Right, okay, so the purpose of this video, well, well, it was twofold. Well, let's deal with the first issue, and that was, are these clubs forgiving or not? Or one more forgiving than the other, let's say. Let's start off and look at some numbers, first of all, with the 7 iron of the 225. And what you'll see is there, you'll see that the, um, I haven't found the centre each time, and the drop-offs are minimal. It's performed incredibly well. It's maintained carry distance, it's maintained launch, and it's maintained spin. Really impressed there. You switch over to the seven iron of the 225s, and again, this is where you'd expect to see an issue for off-center hits. So we lose a lot of carry distance, and that's due to loft. I'll get to that very shortly. But again, this shot that you see very much out of the heel of the club, again, really surprised at how it maintained carry distance, maintained launch and maintained spin. Quite surprising to say the least. Uh, five iron, pretty similar story to be honest with you. I'll flick through some of the shots now and where they came out the center or not center of the club face. And then onto that two, two, one, you'll see the drop off in carry distances, but you'll also see the performance um, particularly impressive the final shot you'll see out the bottom few grooves and again 5,000 revs almost in spin launch in 16.2 carrying that 160 number so the question is first of all are these clubs forgiving or are clubs forgiving I would say based on what you've just seen images of yes they're forgiving you get away nowadays with off-center hits but the other question is this is the 221 any less forgiving than the 225? I would say no. I would say they're equally as impressive in terms of forgiveness, and that's the surprise. When you look at massive clubs, and in particular you've seen these two differences in terms of their size and bulk, you would, or I would at least, automatically assume the 225 is more forgiving than the 221. I think we've seen there, in terms of that impact location, that hasn't been the case. And that surprised me a little, but it's also been something that I've noted whenever I've tried blades, I've never really seen a major issue in terms of forgiveness nowadays. It's been improved on massively and it's difficult to split these. What happens with the bigger headed iron, in this case the 225, is that CG is placed just that little bit further back. So if anything, it may help assist with the kind of launch. But in terms of overall performance for off centre hits, is there a difference? I'm not so sure. If we look at the average numbers now, you'll see on the, um, I'm going to throw you the numbers first of all, of the seven iron up. What you'll see there is differences in terms of the loft of these irons. So we've got a 34 degree seven iron, very much traditional in the 221 versus the 30 degree. And then if you move into the five iron numbers, you'll see a 27 degree five iron at the 221. And in the 225s, it's 24 degrees. The numbers all they tell us is there is a difference in the strength of loft and not much more to be honest with you. The difference is this and this is the key port part that I want you to remember when you next buy your set of irons. I want you to just have a look at the numbers of the 225 and it's the 7 iron and the 5 iron numbers out of the 225. We've got a 165 yard carry on average on the 7 irons or there or thereabouts and in the 5 iron we've got a 175 yard on average carry. Now I'm sure by now you can spot there's a big problem there and we've got to find a six iron and where does that fit in the bag? Well the fact is it doesn't and that's the major issue that I want you to have a close look at when you're buying the next set of irons. If we had a six iron on test right now it would be carrying 175. So my difference between my seven and my six iron would be that 10 yard gap. It would perform in my opinion and what I've seen over the last few years very similar to that of the five iron. And the problem is, is when you get down the longer end of the bag, we or average golfers, and I'll talk about me in particular, I struggle then to generate enough club head speed to deal with the strength of loft and justify that strength of loft to gain the difference that we need to see in terms of gapping in the bag. And hence why I would always suggest when you're looking for your next set of irons, Really see if you can get an opportunity to test 
the longer irons in the bag because that's what you need to see and I guarantee you you need to drop one of your irons out the bag whether it be a six iron whether it be a five iron but at some point there is going to be a crossover where two of your clubs do exactly the same and you're literally wasting your money in my case I go from six iron skip the five and I go into a four iron and that always gives me that bridge that gap and gives me a justifiable yardage difference between the two so please when you next buy your set of irons if you can and it's a thing that I think manufacturers really need to start doing and that's providing custom fitters with a longer iron in the bag for you to try because you really need to see these numbers before we do the obvious thing which is what we all do when we go and buy our irons we have a seven or a six piece set and we go pitch and wedge through to five iron pitch and wedge through to four iron it's automatic what we do but have a look in your bag and I'll bet you that either your four five or six iron is less used than the others in that bag because you know it doesn't bridge the gap and it performs exactly the same as another club or another iron at least in your bag so that's the message that I want to get home twofold forgiveness that was one of the key factors I think right now irons drivers whatever you want to call it don't be put off by any of them don't be pigeonholed into a category they are all performing incredibly well in terms of that key thing forgiveness and I clarify that as being off center hits that's what I am clarifying forgiveness as being not seeing a drop off in performance in relation to off center hits I think virtually all clubs are doing that right now and it's a massive help for average golfers the second thing is just concentrate on that long end of the bag when you're looking at irons and make sure that you're not duplicating the bag, uh, irons in the bag and wasting your valuable money right that is me done i hope that made sense i wanted to try and explain it in a, in a clear and concise way but often we're going 221 225 it's very very confusing and uh, hopefully i managed to relay relay that back to you in a sensible enough manner right that is me done penny is just lying alongside me she's just popped her head up and she says it's time to finish we're all done thank you for watching this video subscribe if you don't already hit that like button give me some feedback and i'll see you all very soon